Ready in Chumash. Arba, Shalosh, Steim. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's at podcast. <laughs> With Christina P. Meow, 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 meow. Come see me, you stand up live. San Francisco, July 29th, and July 30th, and then Seattle, July 31st at the Neptune, and then Cleveland, Ohio in August, Minneapolis tits at Acme Comedy Club, August 26th and 27th, one night only in Brooklyn, uh, the night before Bauhaus, September 7th, obviously, that's why you're there, too. Nashville, Tennessee at Zanies in October, and then back again to Jew Dork Titties at Caroline's in November, and then I also doing Fart Lauderdale. Um, ChristinaPonline.com for tickets. Sattva Luxury Mattress Company. I've loved them for over a decade now. Tommy and I wanted a beautiful new mattress and we didn't want to pay a fortune for it. I found Sattva Mattress Company online. Their ordering process was so easy. Their customer service was impeccable. Um, the mattress came quickly. It was set up expertly and they even took away our old mattress for a nominal fee. I really believe in this company and I encourage you to try them out. And um, right now, if you go to sattva.com slash the shit, you can get $200 off your next Sattva purchase. Currently, we sleep on the Solaire. It goes up, it goes down, it vibrates, it lights up. It is fantastic, but their luxury firm is also outstanding, as is their Lumen Leaf. We have all three kinds of mattresses in our home, and every time a guest sleeps on them, they go nuts. Sattva.com slash the shit for $200 off your next Sattva purchase. I want to come you see you in New York at <gasps> Caroline's. How fun would that be? Would you really? I would love that. I if I can, that ma- If I can make sure that I can get there. Is it on a weekend? Weekday? Oh, yeah. I oh, usually okay. do Friday, Saturdays. Oh, really? Amazing. Uh, that would be so fun. Where did you... By the way, Jamie Lynn Sigler is oh, joining me. <laughs> you know her. She's a very famous actress. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I love how both you and Rob Eiler, your television brother from Sopranos, you guys are the most down-to-earth, <laughs> humble, famous people I think I know. You know why? I have actually come to realize why I think we're a little <laughs> bit like that. Because... The beginning of our careers and like kind of our lives were part of like this crazy huge show. And it's really like done nothing for us later in life. Like <laughs> in the and I, I in a way of meaning like obviously it, the only <laughs> thing it's actually given me to take on with my life is the incredible experience I had and the relationships I made from mm-hmm, it career wise, mm-hmm. like it it didn't like it right. did and it didn't. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like it gave me a little bit of cred, but I still have to hustle and do all everything. So I feel like it really just taught us a very important lesson early in life that like the most important thing is the people and the time and the other stuff doesn't matter. So true. Or it doesn't last. Absolutely. Because uh, the biggest lesson of show business is like just when you think you're shit, you ain't shit. Yep. Because it's always about the next project. They don't give a shit what you did today, how famous you are. You're right. It's constant grind and hustle. So if you get your self-worth from that external validation, you're going to be a miserable human being. There you go. Because it's just business. Yeah. It's just a horrible business. Yeah. So I think that's why we give off like that (laughs) vibe because we're like, oh, I mean, it's still hard. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah, yeah. And you're a mother of two children. You have two little boys, four and eight. That'll humble you. <laughs> yeah, literally, I literally, I was. <laughs> hey, when I say that fucking, and I, I feel I'll like I probably I'm, say it a hundred times. You could do a literally count for literally. me. Sure. Um, I was having my makeup done for my special mom jeans, and I was sitting in the makeup chair. And everybody was just doting on me, like you're so gorgeous, you're just so you're amazing. And I was like, you know what's funny is in twelve hours. I'll be wiping asses Mm -hmm. and snotty nose and Mm -hmm. somebody will yell at me and Mm -hmm. throw something at me Mm -hmm. and hit me. And um, not my husband, my children. (laughs) (laughs) Children, boys are so fucking abusive. Um, Yeah, it's very humbling and it's very grounding. Yes, my little one in particular. My Actually, my older one, maybe it's because he's older. Like he is so sweet to me. 
like loving like what do you need mommy can I help you I mean like he still can be like an asshole sometimes but he's so good to me and my little one like tries to make me cry (laughs) (laughs) that's amazing like he will look at me and be like I don't like you (gasps) or if a song will come on the radio and I'm like I love this I'll start singing he's like turn it off oh yeah like what the heck did I ever do to you yeah don't sing mommy they hate it when I sing they don't what want me that? to do anything. They don't want us to have any joy. No joy. Yeah, they get upset when you're they a person. They get upset when you're happy. Yeah. Mm. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, she's a host on Pajama Pants co- a podcast, which you guys have heard me talk about. I love, love it. I love that you love it. I love it. I love you, Rob, and Kasim have such great chemistry. And it's been a really fun experience watching you guys grow as as podcasters yeah. as friends and yeah. you figure out your dynamic and well because Kasim yeah. and I literally met on our first episode oh I we walked in and sat across the table from each other and I was like nice to meet you <sighs> I remember sitting looking around and being like what are we about to do I don't know this guy it's crazy and it's so cool to see how far we've come and and all that we've like been able to share and yeah. it just it's it's a cool experience podcasting because it is such an intimate conversation that you just really forget that it's going to be put out there and we really we really go all over the place (laughs) you know we get super deep and we get super dirty and super weird all at the same time that's why i love you guys because it you know i understand the uh the experience people have when they listen to your mom's house or this podcast it's called parasocial i learned that you're social but you're not really and in a one-on-one relationship oh. it's like so i feel like that way about you guys that other people feel about my podcast sure where i'm like oh, like i you know i i know you all on a personal level but i love the show world as well it's yeah. cute it's yeah. fun you guys are good you're good people and it comes through that's nice you can tell when people are fucking bullshit too when they're podcasting you're like no, I, that's yeah not true. for sure for yeah. sure i had actually this girl that was like on um the COVID team, I believe, in, on Big Sky, the show that I work on last year, and she came up to me her last day and was like, "I'm leaving. I'm I'm putting the face to the name because you know COVID. You don't get to like see anyone yeah. basically." Yeah. She's like, "I just want you to know I'm an OG pajama pants listener, and I love you guys so much." And I, oh. when somebody tells me that more than anything else, like even Sopranos, I'm like, "Oh my god, you get me! <laughs> like." <laughs> You're my people. Yeah. Like anyone that listens to our show, there might be like only 800 of them, but like <laughs> those people are like, I feel such a connection. Absolutely. To. Cause it's a deeper connection. Mm-hmm. Like when they, when they see you on the street, they fucking see yes, you. Yes, you're right. You feel it. They're like, oh, mommy, you know, they, they're they, like, did Jack make you cry today? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, hold me. Yeah. It's a, it's a deeper connection, which is kind of fucking mm-hmm. really special and cool. Yeah. Um, God, there's so much I want to ask you about, but let's talk about, um, let's talk about nannies. Yeah. You, you're a you working found mom. Me mine. Yeah. Thank let's God. Let's first off say that you were literally an answer from the universe because I got this oh, job good. on Big Sky. I flew my mom out because we had no help yet here in Austin. We were going on like nine months of no nannies, no oh help. Oh my God. SOS. And then I get this job. I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? So I fly my mom out from Long Island. We're going to try and figure it out. And you just so happened to text me. (laughs) And you were like, I just met this great lady, but we already hired somebody. Here's her number. Yeah. Because this is actually a funny story. Prior to, I had asked somebody else for a nanny recommendation. She's like, my nanny's daughter will nanny. I'm like, great. (laughs) Uh-oh. I call my husband. I'm like, I got, I took care of it. I have somebody coming Uh-oh. on Friday. Don't worry. Apparently, she's wonderful. He texted me. He's like, Jamie. <laughs> if this, I hope this is, doesn't sound mean. It will. It's okay. We love me. He's like, she can't stop sweating. Oh. She's. <laughs> I love it. She's, Let's go. She's at least 300 pounds. Yeah. And she has no teeth. Wow. And I'm like, what wow. do you mean? And he's like, she's just sitting on the couch staring at the boys and they keep knocking on my office door. Like, who is this woman? I'm like, I don't know. I'm sorry. Like, I had to leave. I was in a panic. I'm like, what do you mean she has no teeth? Because when I met her, wow. she had a mask. <gasps> 
So right. he's like, she has no teeth. Jack will not play with her. Of course. She keeps asking them to watch TV. And, you know, they're little boys. They don't want to sit down and yeah. watch TV. So thank God you heavenly angel texted me Norma's number. I and she's you. still with us, you know, thank almost God. a year later. She's thank wonderful. God. See, that's the thing is the, the nanny world is full of pitfalls. Like there's a there's a lot of little things I've learned over the years. Like I don't want a bitch that's too young. No, I don't trust the young. And I know some families, they love to have like a 20 year old. I don't trust the 20 year old. They don't have a lick of sense yet. They don't want to be doing this either. No. Do you know what I mean? A lot of the time, like they're they're waiting for something else to happen. They can leave you at the drop of a hat. And you know, your kids get attached to people. Of course. There's so many things I look for. But we had a we had a <laughs> <laughs> no teeth, 300 she pounds no teeth. and sweaty. And like you, I got, think it's that was like the trifecta. It was, you know what I mean. Like one of them would one have been of the fine, three is but okay. all three together. <laughs> and you know, like kids do a hazing period with it yeah. with a nanny always too. Yeah. So you have to have someone that knows and can get through the hazing period yeah. and doesn't take stuff yeah. personal. Yeah. Wow, that's that is all three because it uh, is. so so <laughs> just a dovetail. Yeah. So uh, we all had COVID, the, like the early strand. My husband had broken his arm and his leg yes. and was in the basement. We couldn't move him because of his broken condition. So then he brought home COVID from the hospital. I got the COVID. The kids kind of did, not really, like it passed over them, but they were still, we we're all fucked up. Yeah. And so I was, I was like, please send me a nurse, like somebody to take care of my husband who's down there, all of us. He <laughs> sent this woman, bless, bless her heart, as they say. Mm. Bless it. Because she came and thank God, anybody, they, Charles Manson could have showed up and I'd be like, yes, just watch them so yeah. I can sleep. I don't care. Um, she fed my children Filipino hot dogs for three meals a day because I told her, I made the mistake of telling her, I really like those little pink things. And then she just fed them every meal, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There were hot dogs on the plate. And I was like, okay. Yeah, like, they don't like them that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, and then she called my dog Bisky because she couldn't say Bitsy, and I just let her do it because yeah. I was like, I don't well. fucking care. Um, we had a Christmas tree that she broke down. She she took a saw and then sawed off all the wait, branches. Wait, what? Yeah, and I just let her do it because I was like, I'm sick. Like she took oh. it out back with a saw? Nope, nope, in oh, my in living room and then house. sawed the tree apart. And I was like, fine, I don't care. But the breaking point for me was... <laughs> She would wake up in the morning and, her, and and then she would stay in her pajamas until about 2 or 3 p.m. And I, even that was okay. But one time she bent over and she wasn't wearing any underwear mm. under her, her gown. And mm. I was like, oh, I was she still on a board. Nightgown? Yeah, a nightgown. And she was like. That's awfully comfortable. Awfully comfy. It was That's just getting a, like real intimate. Comfortable. Yeah. And she'd only been with us for like four or five days. And I'm like. <laughs> And I'm like, you're already in your, your sleeping shirt, essentially. Yeah. But again, I was so sick with COVID. And my kids were just like, you know, they're two and four. So they were running around. They can't sit and watch fucking TV. No. So I was like, just just keep them alive was my mantra. Just yeah. keep them alive until I can get better. So the breaking point for me with this broad was that, so she showed up wearing teeth, right? She had teeth. <laughs> and then she suddenly didn't. Like suddenly, and she just didn't put them in that just day. Just up to, and then stopped putting them in for the. It's jarring. <laughs> like no disrespect. It that's terrible. To, it happen if you have it no sucks. teeth. I'm so sorry, but put put them in, put put them in because you know how scary it is for other for kids especially. But for me as your employer, like I want you to wear clothes and I want you to. Well, wear it's teeth. misleading. Yeah. She came in with teeth. It's unfair. It's re it's it's actually not right. <laughs> I'm like, yo, you don't care that you don't have teeth in the world. Like, I I I feel like, and I understand you may not have money, but you can go to like dental colleges and have students work on you, and it's a fraction of the cost. Yeah, you can. But she had them. That's right. I forgot she did. She have. came in with them. She was like, I'd prefer not to today. No, that's fraud. Yeah, but I understand that overweight with children. It's kind of hard because how is she gonna chase after them? Well, that I mean, we could figure that out, but you know, but it, but like she just like just was just he said she kept sh shaking her head and like shrugging her shoulders, like I like you know you try, try you try to engage with them. Okay, guys, let's try this. Like there was just nothing. I don't like that. No. I don't like lazy. Lazy is inexcusable. But no teeth. She had no teeth or one or two. He said no teeth. <laughs> I I never got to actually see it because she never came back. Good, cut her loose. 
Now, one one valuable lesson I've learned too with Nanny Sitch, if you're listening to, is like if you get that hunch that stuff isn't right with them, cut them. It's not going to get better. I remember I had a, a nanny one time when my second child was first born. We have our lady that's been with us since Ellis was four months old. She's our ride or die. Like this woman. I met a, her at your house. She's yes. an angel from God, and I we take good care of her, and she's our family member. But the second person we tried to bring in to help our primary lady with the newborn. <laughs> And I remember we were using a passy with Julian and she ripped the passy out of my baby's mouth and was like, I don't believe in pacifiers for children. And I was like, you're fired. Like, that's all I needed to see because I've I've tried to make it work with people. I'm like, it's not working. This tells me I I know everything I need about you. You're done. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck out of here. Yeah. No. When you're going to tell somebody how to parent. Uh uh. Nah. My I I I because I think we've had. Like I had no nanny for my first sons till he was four when wow. I was pregnant with, to have Jack. I had like babysitters here and there, but I didn't really fully go back to work. My husband was playing baseball. I was just, and I'm just stubborn. And like, I was like, I, if I'm not working, I'm going to do it all myself, which was just a bad idea. But I learned the hard way. And then our nanny Maria stayed with us for three years until we moved here. And she was the best. And she like... I knew her because she had worked with another family, a friend of mine that had moved away. And so it was sort of a seamless thing. And she actually really helped me understand boundaries Mm. and, um, and all of that. But I have this sensitivity of like, because I didn't grow up with any nannies or babysitters. It was like my mom, my dad, and my grandma. I kidding me. I'm like so afraid of them loving the nanny more than me. I know. And I, I work, that's what Maria helped me with. Cause she saw me getting like really sensitive about it. And I remember her literally sitting me down one day and being like, Jamie, I love your kids, but not that much. Like <laughs> I, I don't yeah. want to take them home with me. Yeah. I will protect them and make sure that they are always safe and happy. And I will always remind them that you are their mother. And I was like, okay, thank you. I'm yeah. sorry. I was a crazy bitch. Like, I, I don't know how to do this. But our nanny now, I love so much, but she does these things where everything is like, oh, Jack, don't do that. Mommy will get mad at us. Oh, oh no, no, no. Let's not do that because mommy will get mad. And I'm now like becoming this like you're, bad, you're guy. The bad guy. And I've tried so many times to be like, hey, let's not. Let's just have it be like a rule because yeah. you need your boundaries. And like yeah. you need to tell him that that's not OK. And she'll go, uh, uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. uh. And then she'll just keep doing it. Mommy doesn't want you to. But she's so amazing in every other way that I don't, I just like, should I let this one go? Yeah, can I I tell you something? So two part, there's two part. I'm so stoked about this. For all your summer travels, whether you're going abroad or staying domestic and want to immerse yourself in the culture, now is the perfect time to start Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. You know, I love to brush up on my Espanol, that's Spanish, before we head to Mexico. We're going to go there this summer. Um, I love Babbel. I use it a few times a week to stay sharp. And the best part is if you're a busy person, all you need is 10 minutes a day or every few days, 10 minutes to complete a lesson so you can start having a real life conversation in a new language in as little as three weeks. Other language learning apps uh, use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Right now, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash WMMA. That's babbel.com slash WMMA for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Ooh, it's sunglasses season. And I've been wearing my Shady Rays all summer long. I've been wearing them in the lake when I go out on the boat. And now I'm at the beach and you better believe I bring my Shady Rays. The frames are durable. They're extremely clear. And the best part is that they're light. I mean, they feel feather, feather weight, and they're just so good and fashionable. And they really are better than uh, the expensive pairs of sunglasses I've had. If you don't love them, 
You can exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. And Shady Rays offers the most insane protection plan in all of eyewear. Every pair is backed by lost and broken replacements. So they'll replace it. They'll replace it if you lose it or you mess them up even on the first day of owning them. So here's the deal, man. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code MOMS50 for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 200,000 people. I have to write these things down. This is what Rob does too. So yes. that I can, okay. Okay, number one, asking for help is huge. And I know there's women listening to this that are judging and going like, how dare you have nannies and this is yeah. they're raising their kids. No, 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 no. What you're saying when you were pregnant with your second child and you have a toddler running around is so incredibly hard so hard with no family around i have no family no help. Look, yeah. first of all we have no family so like you can't do it all no one woman it used to be that you have generational help grandma neighbors yes. other women yes. in the village yeah and now we don't have that so mm -hmm. i think a nanny is a valuable you can use a nanny the way you want to use the nanny yes. they don't have to just raise your kids without you like you can use her to be there, like if you want to hang out with your kids, she can be there. And then you can, sometimes they send her home, like I want to kick it with Same. these two animals, Same. go home. Past fr last go Friday, home. I was, it was four o'clock. I was like, you can go home. She's Slam. like, yeah. really? I was like, yeah, I have, I want to, I want to be with my kids. Also, I'm starting to work again. Yeah. And when that comes up, I will say when I was working, she was better because I was back and forth. So when I was home, she would do their laundry. Mm. or help with dinner because I wanted to play with them. Yeah. I wanted to That's be That's how there. you can use a nanny yes. so that they're not, because I don't want other people raising my kids. No. Another nanny, sorry, other people, one lady raising. I don't believe that. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, they can never love, because I, I had the same issue when I had my first kid and that's when we brought our nanny on and I was like, he's going to become more attached to her. He's going to love her more than me. And then my therapist was like, Christina, think of your parents and how awful they were. And I was like, yeah. She's like, yet you still love them, right? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, no matter. <laughs> and we're nice to our kids. Yes. Can you imagine how much they're going to love us? You're always, you're, you're an irreplaceable part of their hearts and yeah. their souls. And that woman will always be second place or yeah. third place or fifth place. They're going to be special. But but also you want them to be bonded to this of other course. woman so that when you do have to leave, you're like, okay, they're safe. They're they're, safe. Yeah. They feel good with that lady. Um, okay. And then number three, you being the bad guy, <clears throat> I actually relish being the bad guy. Really? I, I like do this. Do I need like, to step into this role more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like the idea that mommy doesn't, mommy you can't says, fuck with mommy. Don't. You know why? Because then- they like that. They actually like it when you're they the They feel boss. safer with boundaries. I don't know. I don't know what Cutter is like with putting down the law. Oh, yeah, he's 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 harsh too. Oh, in in a great. in a good meaning, like he's like no, absolutely not. Like he has very firm boundaries. Yeah. But what's weird is he's tougher on Bo. Bo's the younger, or the, the older. older, eight years old. Yes. Bo. I mean, I'll call Bo out, but I see Jack is a lot. He has yeah. a lot of anxiety. He yeah. has a lot of issues that we have to parent him very specifically for that we've been working with people on. And I think he weigh, he wears you out so yeah. hard that if Bo does one thing, Cutter will, Cutter will like snap right. at him. But I want to be like, yo, he's a kid too. So I think he thinks I'm soft on Bo. Oh. Um, because I just have a different perspective on it. Also, I feel like dads are tougher on their firstborn sons usually. That's an interesting point. My yeah. dad was on my oldest brother. He was tougher on him than really. The little. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Just because they should know better. They're the. I just feel like maybe they there's a subconscious thing where they know they're kind of being a little too hard and fucking up. So like this second one, they're like they've learned and they're doing better, mm. but they've already kind of established like this type of relationship with the first one. I don't yeah. know. No one pays me to say this stuff, <laughs> so I, I could be wrong, but I, I feel like kind but of. So what, what I found is that if you correct the older boy, then the second boy falls in line. Yes. So the first oh, yes. one's got to be tight, high and tight. <laughs> and then the second boy goes, oh, yeah, that, I can't fuck with it. Because Ellis that, will set the tone. 
But see, but then it, that's where I'm confused because Bo is like obsessed with me. Yeah. So why isn't Jack doing that? Jack's the younger one and Jack's not obsessed with you. The older one's I mean, obsessed Jack, with you. I mean, he loves... Like if I leave, he'll be like, where is she? I want her. I want her. I want her. But the second I'm there, he's like, <laughs> what can I do to fuck with her? Kind of so he's in the phase where he's rejecting mommy, which is important. He needs to show you because he pushes back on you. I think it means that he you're takes doing everything it right. out on me. That's everything. good. That's everything. good. Everything. They're supposed to. OK. No, that's normal. It means he trusts that you can contain all that. OK. No, you want that. That's what I've heard. I don't know. That's what the shrink I'll says. I'll take it. Yeah. Thank you. So my younger one's obsessed with me and the older one comes and goes with it. Like sometimes he's kissy lovey, sometimes not. But the younger one, I'm having an issue where he gets into my bed at like four in the morning mm -hmm. or seven. Mm -hmm. So you said that you had that. Yeah. So Jack was waking up like multiple times in the night coming to our room. And so now we got bed like a, a bow, a trundle bed. Ooh. So, cause I asked him, I was like, dude, why are you doing this? Like, why do you keep coming? And he said, I don't want to be alone. He's Aww. just at that developmental stage where yeah. he's aware that he's alone in his room and he doesn't like it, which I can't argue with. I get it. It's scary. So at, when Cutter and I are going to go to bed, we'll now take out the trundle and we'll pick him up and put him in there oh. and wake him up just enough that he knows like you're in Bo's room now. Aww. And then he doesn't come in our room anymore. See, that would work. So I put my two boys in the same room. Oh, they are in the same room. Which is so, and now he's, the cutest thing just started happening. They're sleeping together in the same bed. <gasps> That's the cutest. I know. But still Juju gets up and comes to He's mommy. like up, up at no, 4 a.m. No. or no? Just he just runs over and, and just wants to snuggle. But I, you um, know what? On the other hand, I'm like, this won't last forever. This is true. I know. Yeah, and Bo, Bo, does, Bo, if Cutter goes out of town, He'll sleep with me. But other than that, I know they it does go fast. I don't want that. I, I want know. him to snuggle with me until he's 40 and big stinky man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Please no. But I do want I That's like one of the people you watch on TikTok. No, I know, I don't know. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't know. I know, I know. <laughs> They're just so cute. Uh, I know. But yeah, sh he'll never love you the way I mean, he'll never love the nanny the way that they love you. That's okay. like not even Thank a you for making me feel better. Possibility. So I was I read men are or I listened to I can't lie men are from Mars women are from Venus. Tell me everything. I know I know like basically guys are just like emotionally cripples and retarded and they don't want to talk about their feelings so they'll just like go away and like lift weights and then come back when they're done mm -hmm. and then they're like hey and they just like run away from you when they're upset. Whereas we want to talk and yeah. like work it out. Yeah. So we can't take it personally when they run away to their cave. But see, Cutter and I are, a li intra a, we're not the norm in that, well, I'll want to communicate and he just doesn't know how. Like he mm. just can't. And I'll tell him like, dude, I'm trying to talk this out with you, but you're like unable to answer me. Like, can you have a conversation? Are you okay? But- when we, sometimes when we get in arguments, I need space. Like I like time. I like mm. to walk away. I like to gather my thoughts. I like to cool off before we communicate. And he will literally follow me wherever I go. So he's just, the woman in that situation. And mm -hmm. you're the man. You're like, I want to fucking go in my cave, mm -hmm. sort it out. And then he wants to be in the heat of the moment mm -hmm. with you. And that's no bueno because mm -hmm. you'll say crazy shit. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. do you do? I'm warning. I'm like, dude, don't follow me like this is not gonna end well like nothing as good is gonna come out of this like I don't want to talk it's yeah. it, like I'm not leaving you I just like I don't want to talk and he, he can't handle it I'm sure there's some like past thing in his trauma in his life and like why he is that way but we've been together over 10 years he just he can't it, it like scares him when, when you're I mad mm -hmm. yeah I have that too with Tommy because it's an abandonment thing yeah because you're like if you're mad at me it means that you're gonna hate me forever you're gonna leave me and then I'll be all alone so it's like this very unconscious yeah terrifying thing yeah when you get into a fight um, and I grew up seeing my parents fight all the time yeah they're gonna be married 50 years this summer so it's wow. like that doesn't scare me 50 years. I know, crazy, right? You know what? I just they haven't slept in the same bedroom for 15 years. Uh and I just saw there was this article that came out that was saying how 
it's like actually kind of healthy for some relationships <laughs> for people to sleep in separate bedrooms. Well, here's the it's deal. It's worked for them. I, it worked for them and that's fine. My parents did that. My Not my, my whatever, my mother and my stepfather did that the last five years, but then they got divorced at 17 years. Oh. But like, here's the thing. There's a certain age where like, do you even want to bang anymore? Like is banging the priority? Right. No, I'm already there. Right. <laughs> and women, and especially once we hit menopause. Anyway, I was looking at the Kelly McGillis model of life. and What's I, the Kelly McGillis model good, Thank of you life. for asking. Is, so, that what, is this why she wasn't in Top Gun, the well, sequel? She, she just kind of dipped out of acting and let her looks go. And I think, which is like, yeah, of course. I'm, she they said, had some magical scream though over i mean tom cruise looked like he was 35 and so did jennifer connelly i mean but the chemistry between kelly mcgillis and 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 tom cruise in that movie was undeniably so good. beautiful but uh, so anyway so she's now a lesbian so she had, was married to two men and then was like ah, i think i'm gonna go for a woman on this third run but i kind of get it now i never got it until now because i'm like yeah men are like they're so incompatible with us on so many yeah. levels. And when you start so to she's raise- like, ah, I don't want to fuck anymore. So I just want a friend to hang out yeah. with every day. Right. That, I get it. I mean, maybe it's not even about eating beaver. It's just about being no. married to your best yeah. friend. Yeah. Like, so maybe. Or- I know a female couple that is like barely sexual and they love each other and they're so happy. And- this is what I'm saying. And that maybe that's what the Golden Girls was really all about. <laughs> Is them being like they were I so don't. stoked. They yeah. were like, <laughs> we figured it out. Yeah, like just live with women, so you yeah. don't have to deal with like how emotionally retarded men are. I know, I know. Because <sighs> you see it when you raise sons. You see it. You see it when you when you get together to raise children. Like the men, the men teach them how to deal with the outside world. Is what the thinking is, and then mom teaches them how to be on the inside. Yeah. We're, the, we're in charge of the inside world, the emotional yes. world. We're, yes. we're everything in there. So no, they're very necessary uh, roles, obviously. I'm just kidding. But maybe <laughs> once Tom is dead, I'll just... Um, I think that's a really good plan. Yeah. <laughs> you, Depending where I'm at in life, let me know. <laughs> if I don't want to get laid anymore, right, I, I probably me. won't at menopause, after menopause, right? Like, do you even want a dick after menopause? I I mean I haven't been there yet, but I yeah. think it's very likely that that you that you will not. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's been a lo- it's been a long time. It's been a- you know what I mean. After a certain point, you're like, <sighs> I know. Been there, done it. So where are you in your mom journey? So you're at four and eight, because I, I look at you at, as like the ghost of Christmas future. Because <laughs> I think from four on, I get I chill. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't stress about going to restaurants. No, we we like our so airplane much. rides aren't oh. as like hellish or scary. Um, although we did just take, we just went back to LA for the first time. And I guess because of COVID, we didn't realize Jack's never been in a hotel. Right. So when we pulled up to the hotel, he was like, is this our new house? Oh. We're like, no, buddy, it has lots of rooms and people come here for vacation. And he's like, does everybody live here? Like it really <laughs> blew his mind. And it made me take a step back and be like, oh, I guess this is like a weird concept. Yeah. Kind of. Um, it's, a, it's a disgusting concept. Yeah. When you think about it. You're right. Have you ever seen your pillow without a case on it? No. All your head juices leak out Ooh. and your mattress is filthy. Ooh. It's full of You've everything. you ruined my life. You're welcome. This is terrible. Go ahead and Google like what a pillow looks like. But anyway, it's it's a filthy concept. It, and it you, is. Your brain teaches you not to think about um, how gross hotels. Oh. Yeah. See all oh. that head filth? I Take out your, your stuff. But anyway. So okay, you, you so, went. So yeah, so four and eight. So Bo now is at this place where I actually like, I like having conversations and hanging out with him. Like we'll That's play a board cool. game or we'll watch. We're watching the original Top Gun together right now. And what do you do during the sexy scene? We haven't gotten there yet. We've only done about forty minutes, so we've okay. splitting it up because of bedtime. But sure. Uh, we just last night started it. So he's 40 okay. minutes in. We haven't had any sexy, sexy time. But I mean, I watched it at his age. You know, it's the 90s were a different time. Yeah. It makes me uncomfortable. I oh, watch it on wow. Like, okay. a lot of tongue I'm warned. They, they really French, deep Frenches. Yeah. It's a lot of deep Frenchy. And you're an actress. When you have to French, they really did real. Do you really put your tongue in someone else's mouth? I've done both. Uh... 
I've done both. I think it just depends on like the type of project, like how much you're willing to like put into it or go for it. You're like, does it, this, you know, this, this little movie doesn't really need that fashion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, but Bo has, is very girl crazy. Oh. Always has been. He has a girlfriend God. named Grace. Oh, and oh, she's fierce. So he's super into her. I've been hearing all about her. He came home one day and was like, I want to propose to her. It's like, okay, whatever that means in your world. Great. What, how can I help? And he's like, I want to give her jewelry. And I was like, well, I don't have any rings that are going to fit this seven year old. So let <sighs> me, let me go in my jewelry box, see what I have. So I have like this costume, pretty like gold plated heart with little pave diamonds that I probably had since I'm like 17, like in the back of my jewelry box. I'm like, here, you can give this to her. We put in a little Ziploc bag. He brings it to school. He's so excited. Pick him up from the bus stop. Like, how'd it go? He was looked so upset. I was like, oh no. And he's like, mom, when the way you put it in the bag, it got all tangled. Oh, and when no. you, when I gave it to her, she opened it and looked at it and said, untangle it and give it to me right. <gasps> So she gave it to him to bring it back home. And I was like, I love this girl. I will absolutely untangle this necklace and put it back right. Right? If you're like me, you're always looking to make sustainable swaps throughout your home. Maybe something that's not wrapped in plastic, doesn't use any harmful chemicals, and hopefully doesn't involve chopping down any trees. My new favorite sustainable swap is real paper real makes a sustainable toilet paper that uses what fast growing bamboo isn't that wild and it's always shipped in plastic free packaging which i love even down to the tape on the box and the great thing about bamboo is that it's a grass and just like a lawn it can be cut and regenerated without harming the plant or the soil so they're able to harvest the same plant over and over instead of cutting down trees isn't that wonderful i love my bamboo toilet paper i love real paper it feels so soft it is softer than anything 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 and you feel good. Real Paper is available in easy, hassle-free subscriptions or for one-time purchases on their website. All orders are conveniently delivered to your door with free shipping and 100% recyclable plastic-free packaging. If you head to realpaper.com slash WMMA and sign up for a subscription using my code WMMA at checkout, you'll automatically get 30% off your first order and free shipping. That's R-E-E-L-P-A-P-E-R.com slash WMMA or enter promo code WMMA to get 30% off your first order plus free shipping. So let's stop flushing our forests and give Reels tree free paper a try. Zero trees, zero plastic, zero compromises with Reel. So I, I spent all night with like my tweezers wow. and like my CVS glasses, getting all the knots out, put it in, put it properly in the Ziploc, you know, where you put the necklace halfway out and close it. Now it will not oh, get tangled. Oh, that's smart. Brought it to her. She wears it every day. <gasps> They've had spicy kisses to which I've asked, what does that mean? He says we're... <laughs> He That's holds spice? her face. Oh, uh, no. She, she holds his face and he's, his hands are on her hips. <gasps> Apparently it happens behind the tree at recess. Wow. But then we were going to. So now I'm hearing about this girl and they haven't met her. She lives in our neighborhood. Like she's what? like this mystery. And so we go to school because Bo got this special award. And so we went up to the classroom to say hi. We have Jack with us. All the kids run up to the door to say hi. This bitch sits at her desk and just stares <gasps> at us. It's like the only kid that doesn't get up. And I'm, lo I'm like, I love her more. What? I'm so desperate for this girl's attention. Like, yeah. I want to know her. Yeah, me too. I'm she so did, insecure. Like, didn't even like look what? all around. Didn't even come up to meet the parents. Right? She's awesome. Wow. Yeah. And Bo actually be started the year with her best friend, Harper. Yeah. And then great. I asked how this happened. And Bo said, Grace decided she liked me and told Harper that that's what she wanted. Dang. And Harper stepped aside. This right? Grace is going to run the world. I love her. Great. So this can't is wait to eight, meet her. eight years old is what? Second grade? Yeah. I mean, this is already. Right. I'm trying but to picture But Bo's always been super. In, like ev Into every year he's had. He actually in kindergarten. Um. 
Kelly Clarkson's daughter was his girlfriend back in LA and they were, him and River were so tight. Wow. Notes in the backpacks, everything. Jeez, he's yeah. going to be a ladies yeah. guy. Like he's, he's got, into he's it. He's got like, he's got swag. Yeah. But he wears a gold chain now. <laughs> <laughs> he told us he wanted a gold chain with his yeah. number seven, his baseball number on it. Dude. He won't he, take it off. He's got them Dykstra jeans. That's yeah. what that is. That's he has a lightning swag. bolts on the side of his head yeah. now right now. That, that, that's genetics, bro. Yeah, that's, that's it's swag. in his blood. That's Dykstra swag. It's you can't. <laughs> You know, well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to hone it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to mine the Dykstra swag. But 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 the, but think about it. So it's half you and yes. then like and then like it's third generation. So it's it's diluted yes, a, enough right. so that he's got the fire, but not the yeah. like it's just enough Dykstra to make him like one thousand fucking rad. Yes. Oh, did you love that? Yes. You know what's so cute? I love um, Ellis is six and they're just so tall and lean. Yes. And they're just like, like they're always um, in their underwear or naked. Yes. And um, Ellis has on, he's got a necklace I got on that says his name and then a Pac-Man necklace because he's so into Pac-Man. And Tom and I were just looking at him. He was just standing, you know, in their cute little toddler box. Yes. Tom was like, look at him. He's just like a little Spengali. Like he's got like they're his They're so necklaces. lean and yeah. muscly. You can start to see their muscles. Yeah. It's crazy. He's just a little, they're just so, they're just so beautiful. Like yeah. their little boys are just so they special. Are. I can't, I can't even, I'm trying to think of Ellis and Julian having girl crushes. And I'm like, that makes me jealous more than the nanny. Cause I'm like, oh. Why you're gonna love somebody except oh really other than mommy oh interesting uh, maybe that's a flawed <laughs> I should talk to my therapist about that one I'm I sure got I'm nothing messing for them you up. on that one I'm sorry sorry <laughs> I'm sorry Julian and Ellis I know what you're gonna talk I think to your that's shrink typical. about yeah yeah well because I I'm like with me and Grace I'd be like this bitch didn't get up and pay her respects oh see I see I'd be it. the opposite I'm, I'm like, like that's you the type say hi of girl you're with. I, like that's who I want him with, you know. Mm. I want someone she that's gonna respect. run his shit. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know. Okay. Like I want a girl that's gonna be like, no, no, give it to me right. Look at you. You know. You know what I love about you is um, <laughs> the East Coastness. You're 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 um what Rob Eiler loves brunettes, right? And I I call yes. them grumpy East Coast brunettes, like the grumpy brunette, the br like these East Coast bitches. Like you guys don't take shit from anybody. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I have you that. You respect the bitch. Yes. I wish I had more of it in me, to be quite honest. I think it's there. It's in there. But it's in there, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We see them, like I was in Atlantic City. I was. I did the Borgata, and I went to the buffet. Oh, the Borgata, yeah. And Rob was like, never do the, he's like, you should have gone to Wolfgang Pucks. <laughs> and I'm like, it was good. But you see those women, they're just, they're, they're the ones they're running loud. the show. They're yeah. loud. And they tell the men what to do. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. It's it's an energy I'm familiar with that I've yeah. been around my whole life. Yeah. That makes sense. Though. Yeah. You're like, look at Grace. Yeah. Look at Grace. <laughs> That's the bitch. That's nice. Love Grace. Yeah. So, okay. <sighs> I, I can't believe they're going to have a girlfriend soon. Let's do some, uh, do we have follow-ups from the last? We do. Let's do voicemail follow-ups. Let me know what the people are thinking. Mm. Such a diverse. What's happening? So many topics on this show. I love it. <laughs> Hi, Mommy and Booth Boys. I have a little quip to share with you apropos your discussion about peeing where you are. Apropos. I am currently in dead stop traffic. I just left Target and I had to pee at Target. But I was just like, I'll just pee when I get home. Mm. No, mm. I am pregnant <gasps> and I'm an idiot because now I'm in dead stop traffic and I have to pee so fucking bad that I'm about to dump out the water in my Yeti and use that. Yeah. Because it's it's painful and I should have fucking peed yeah. at Target. Yeah. Pee where you are. I always pee where God I am. God damn it. Well, I learned the lesson the hard way. I got stuck in an elevator after my dental appointment. And I had the thought before I got in the elevator, you know, Christina, you have to pee. And then I got stuck in an elevator for an hour. I always to pee. listen to that voice. Yeah, the still small voice. Take a shit here. Pee here. <laughs> yep. So you always <sighs> pee when you... I always pee. I'll, I'll pee at Target all the time. The bathroom's right at the entrance of my Target. <laughs> I love it. I'm like, yep, I'll be here a while. Might as well get this over with. I know. What is this that I, I have to allow the, the uncomfortability? It's so... It's oh. so uh, why, why punishing I, yourself. Why do I hate why? myself? Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why can't I enjoy... Where's that self-hate coming yeah. from? Yeah. The self... 
<laughs> love yourself. Let it. Let yourself be. Damn it. I think. I think because like I was on an airplane, oh, well, like last week, and I drank so much coffee and water, and then I was embarrassed about how many times I was going to the toilet. I was like, are people keeping track? Because like I've I've noticed. Right, I'll, I'll be like, right. well, that bitch showed she had diarrhea. Someone was. Someone. Someone was. was. <laughs> For sure someone was because there's some bored ass person on the plane that just like my husband's cutters the type of guy that would be like this person's gone up like eight times. Like he's just like he just care. He just watches everything around him all the time. Yeah. So there's definitely someone like him. Um, you brought this up on pajama pants, which made me laugh so hard. You're like cutter has to point out like everything I'm doing. He'll be like, oh, Jamie, uh, you're oh. drinking the Fiji water again, huh? Like so elaborate on this because. Because I think I'm that asshole. I might be a cutter. It's every, oh, mascara today. Oh, (laughs) oh, you're going with the black bike shorts today. Yes. Like, why does like, every time I walk into a room, we have to announce (laughs) something about me. Like, can we just let me go? I'm in my house. Like what? It's very, he's just, it's just cutter. It's just one of his things. He's, he's 32, (laughs) but he's also like the oldest man I've ever met. And He's turning more and more into Larry David every day. <laughs> like he's a curmudgeon. He finds the bad in everything. Yeah. He's, we call him Doomsday Dykstra. <laughs> like it's just always like the end of the world or the worst possible scenario of anywhere oh, you're yeah. at. He will point it out. That's me too. Yeah. You really? I'm a doomsday or, yeah. It's, Tom always points it out. He's like, you always go to the worst possible scenario. Yeah. That, that's a childhood trauma thing. Uh, yeah. So, so for instance, what today, did he give you anything before you left? Has he done it to you today? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, I ate a, I was eating a, like a, one of my kids fig bars before I left the house. And he's like, oh, you eat those? <laughs> Today, yeah, I just did. Like, like, like he like had to know that fact about me. Do you know what I mean? Do you think what what's the motivation behind the pointing out? I don't know. I really don't know. I it's what's interesting <laughs> is Jack is a lot like Cutter with like anxiety, mm. and we've been told by our occupational therapist like you have to just like get ahead of it, answer all the questions you need to, tell him all the information before he gets anywhere because it makes him feel safer. The less unknown, the better. Mm. So maybe that's a little bit of where it's coming from. So, like he has to point out everything to feel safe. Oh, is, so is Cutter anxious? Is Very. this where the kid gets the Very. anxiety from? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Because I, I do it sometimes when I want to be a bit of an asshole, but in a playful Sure. I'm trying to connect with you, but I don't know how. Oh, that could be it a little bit because it's always playful. It's play. Yes, it's playful in nature. I like to point out like Zolo, for instance, I, I noticed that at lunchtime today he had a, an extra button unbuttoned on his shirt. And in my mind, it's more of like acknowledging, hey, I noticed something new on you because mm. I pay attention to you because I like you. Mm. But I think I embarrassed you and I didn't mean to do that. So I'm sorry. Oh, I'm nice and buttoned up now. Oh, don't, see, don't you, I didn't, you made himself conscious. But I didn't mean to make, I didn't want you to button it up. I just oh. wanted to be like, you're doing something Isn't new. Isn't that interesting? That's kind of interesting. But then I, I, I didn't want, I didn't want you to take it to shame. Okay. All those years of therapy have really worked. <laughs> Look at that. But I mean it. Like you're able to like pinpoint. It's so, it's like so, like could really, uh, mm. People don't realize there's so much conflict out there. And sometimes it's just people coming from like their, their own, own good place. It's it's all people coming from their own stupid That's place. It. And then you're in your own stupid place. Now, let me ask you this, because you're a very sweet lady. And I've always uh, admired this about you. And I especially listening to Pajama Pants. I think you're you're so sensitive and empathetic and you're very sweet and loving. And, and I think that's what I lack you know, so that's why I, I like to, I, I think I am I very think, sensitive yeah. and, and emotional, but I'm saying that I, I have a hard time getting in touch with it. I feel like you're more in touch with your emotions and such the, well, as I am. I think that's, I think honestly that's because I live with MS. So I think it's like mm. really um, just given me like such a different perspective. And it's like one of the things I'll say, like it's actually given me, which I'm like very actually like, in a fucked up way, glad I have it because 
for so much of my life, I was like so broken and nobody knew and everyone just assumed I was like the nice, happy Jamie. She's great. She's this and that. But I was had such terrible shit going on inside me. And MS like slowed my body down so much. And it like in my quest for like healing and all that stuff, I realized how much more emotional healing I needed that it really. And when you live with something that like takes so much of your abilities away and gets in the way of what you want to do just in daily tasks. Ugh. Like you really just look and appreciate everything so much more. Mm. And I just knowing that people had no idea what I was going through. I just know I have no idea what anybody else is going through mm. too. So it really just, I just look at people differently now because I, I just don't know. I just assume everybody is fighting some type of battle every single day. So I think it's just made me a much nicer person. I mean, I was always nice, but like a genuinely kinder person because I just, I feel that connection with people. And for me too, I feel like I know whenever I feel seen or connected to somebody, what I'm actually doing is like forgiving myself in that moment. I think that's why it feels so good. So if I can be that for other people, I'm so happy to. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, suffering, um, suffering it really i mean it sucks yeah. but then it purifies you in, in a weird in a yeah. way it does make you a better human yeah for sure i mean look i mean i wish i was like another way around it and i wish i didn't have to deal with it but at the same time you know uh, so it also makes me look how great so many other things are in my life like i've just you know i have many days where I choose not to focus on it. And that's, it's, it's great. Yeah. You have to go forward. Yeah. What else can you fucking Nothing. do? Nothing. So you're a nice lady. You have I, nice I'm manners. Pretty nice, yeah. Pretty nice manners. I have a hypothetical for you I need help with. Tell me. Is Heather here today? Uh, yeah, she is. Not, not here though. No. Don't bring her in for this. I don't want to embarrass her. So we went, we went to see Maverick yesterday as a staff. Oh, how what a fun outing. Yeah, so amazing. So, it's so good. good. So good. Such a good movie. You've seen the, the second oh, Loved it. Yeah. I, I mean I was I was in the danger zone all last night, just pop yeah. thinking about it. Yes. Yeah. So we all order our food, our popcorn or whatever. And I've got a big bowl of fresh popcorn. And then I put my M and M's in there. Mm, it's just do it right. Yeah. Nice. Just white trash the way I like yes. it. Yes. And in my hands, I'm just gross. And then sweet little Heather. She's our social media lady. Sweetest girl. I love Heather. Heather, I love you. She goes, can I have some of your popcorn? <sighs> In my heart, I didn't want to share the popcorn, mm -hmm. that's, but yeah. I did. That's nice of you. Wow. And, you know, she's putting her hands in there. And, Into know, her yeah. mouth and back in, yeah. <laughs> and we're in a post-COVID, and I'm trying to fight the, the, the germ thing that's happening to me. You know what I mean? She put you in a bad spot. She put me in a spot. Yeah. That was... That, that's a really bad spot. To well, what be would in. you have done? Because I don't want to. I would have share. done what you said to. I would have said yes. <laughs> but that's like they need to teach you that in school. You know, like you don't like that's your movie. I I'm actually wow. I would have done the same as you, but with like my family or anyone else. Like movie food is my food. Like I don't share what I eat in a movie. That's see, like my my lap, your, my your food. Zone. Like you yeah. get your own. I'll buy it for you. Like, but see, see, I wanted, I wanted to say that. I don't know why I'm whispering. She's gonna hear this. <laughs> I, I wanted to suggest, like, oh, do you, should I buy you? I'll, guy, come over here, get Heather. But how long would that have taken you? That's to what be I'm like, saying. I'm sorry. Oh, it's like a weird, like, like that would have taken a minute or two, and That's you're in I'm the middle of a movie. Yeah. What are you Too do? late. You got to go. Yeah. You just got to go. Yeah. And then uh, deal with your own mental patient. Did it thoughts. fuck? Did it fuck up it any fucked of me your up. movie experience? And, it, and eventually That's I was like, bummer. you know what? You take the thing. Oh, and then yeah. I gave oh. it to her, which is probably better because I didn't want to eat the it whole thing. It limited your M &M my calories. Popcorn, right? Yeah. Whatever, so fine. But. It was a win win. But but I was like, I kept thinking about it last night. I'm like, did I do the right thing? Should I have asserted a boundary there? But you're, no, sometimes it's not worth it. She, she's sweet. She's like the, the literally the nicest sure person clean. in studio jeans. And the obviously. Right. She's a girl. So she's way more right. hygienic than. And I'm not even a germ person, person, but I just feel like. Yeah. I'm not a germy person, but but in a post-COVID world, I mean, we just we just got over all this. 
Yeah. So my so my alertness was a little high. Yes, I get it. Yeah. I'm sorry that happened. Traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> get it. It's traumatized. I was thinking about it all night long. No more. Heather's not invited to the She's movies not anymore. Heather, you're not. I'll, I'll invite. <laughs> I was, I was You're really, just not going to sit next to her. Yeah, from now on. Who said it? Nadav, you sit next to me because I know you won't eat my food. Uh-huh. Zolo's good. I'm Actually, also very clean. You're all very clean. We, we had this discussion. You have a clean he crew here? He gets so mad at me when I say that he's filthy. Yeah. I also have another epiphany I wanted to share with you guys. It's called the Pajitsky effect. This is where you, you live one way your whole life, mm-hmm. and then suddenly you have an epiphany, and your whole world is shattered. I have one for you. Ready? Right. Yes. <laughs> the band name boys to men yes literally means boys who grew into men right didn't know that <laughs> what did you think it was i have no idea i was like boy like boys like our band boys to men like our band like everybody can like our band you could be a boy or a man that's what i thought you didn't think it had anything to do with the four men young boys that were turning into men no wow wow <laughs> i can't share that with you i think i had i was in on it from the beginning you knew you i just I, sensed that i never thought it was anything different yeah so i think i knew wow yeah. i'm trying to think if yeah, i've had any I'm a fucking of idiot i'm a fucking idiot <laughs> Um, so I'll, I'll make you feel better. I'll think no, of a No, I know that you have silly thoughts to too. I hear you on Pajama Pen. You're always very open about oh. your, you're like, oh, yeah. what? Like, I don't know a lot of porno genres either. And I know the boys love to torture you. <clears throat> like Tommy, Every like, once in a while, they'll just throw it out. Jamie, what's a <laughs> BCJ? Like, I don't yeah. Know. Samesy. So I have that issue too. Cause we're not in that world most of the time. We're just no. wiping kids asses yeah. and stuff. Um, oh, here's, a, here's an old school one that I had for the longest time. Um, I didn't know what the store Smart and Final sold. I thought it was a store where it was like last call for these items. I would have thought too. Right? Oh, okay. It's a grocery store? No. I think so. It's like a, it's it? like a it's an office. Yeah, it's like it's a, a grocery store. Yeah. It's oh, a, it is a grocery store. Terrible yeah. name. <laughs> terrible terrible name. name for a grocery store. Nothing to do with food. Or it doesn't sound like a nice farmer. No, I thought it was a clearance, food. like a clearance yeah, store. And yeah, like, I would have thought that too. Like, yeah, you're smart, but all sales are final. Like, you're smart to shop here, but all sales are final. That's right. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> like, you're smart, getting it cheaper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it a cheap grocery store? It, it's like a bulk kind of store. Like, kind like Costco? Of, like a step below Costco. Oh. Yeah, yeah Do you're they smart. still exist? Yeah. All sales are final. <laughs> That's what I thought. Terrible name. So, I'm but, with you on that one. But this one's getting even better. So Nadav, we were talking about it. Can I share the one that, tell tell yeah. her what you thought. Um, tell her, this one's amazing. Yeah, so uh, during lunch, we were, t- we were talking about uh, dumb waiters. And I didn't realize, like they were talking about, okay, oh yeah, like there's like an elevator that, you know, you could move food from one floor to another and that's called a dumbwaiter and I an epiphany had in my head I'm like oh that's what a dumbwaiter is because I thought it was literally those like figurines or statues of waiters like the monkey butler hold the tray and that I don't even I don't think I've even heard the well, you term could, dumbwaiter oh a dumbwaiter is in Webster remember that TV show Webster they had a dumbwaiter and like you pull, it's a pulley yeah. thing that goes yeah, from yeah, one yeah. floor to yeah. the next. That's yeah. a dumbwaiter. Oh. Yeah. You thought that was the dumbwaiter. Right. So I saw this oh. and I thought this was a dumbwaiter because it's a waiter without a brain, yeah. which is what makes it dumb. I like the, <laughs> I like the dog one. I would buy that one. Yeah, but that makes sense. But but tell her about the, sh- the shop. B-A-S-S. Oh, oh, th- oh, this is what we're talking about. Yeah, this one was even dumber. Than this. Uh, Does Valtrex suppress the immune system? I like to see your, uh, <laughs> oh, that's pre- your, show. <laughs> your search history here. Um, right. It's, uh, I always pronounce it the base pro shop, which I guess is wrong. <laughs> yes. Is what I'm told. He thought it was the base pro. The base pro. What did you think was sold at the base pro? <laughs> Just like bases and stuff. <laughs> like an like, entire I, warehouse. Because those are big stores. And there was like a Bass fish. Pro Shops yeah. are fucking enormous. Yeah, it's a warehouse of just bass guitars is what he thought. 
I you know what I knew that it was that there was a fish as the logo. And I'm like, oh, even all right. with they're, the fish, they're really leaning. I mean, into it says it. outdoor world underneath them. Yeah, you they know, are, they really... are like a like a <laughs> area of Disneyland. <laughs> I've never been inside. Of really? One. Have you? Yes, because when my husband would play minor league baseball and I was with a little baby or a small toddler and have no idea what to do in these towns, I would find places like Bass Pro Shop that look like a cool, fun, interesting yeah. place for him. And we would just walk around him. His oh, yeah, favorite like place. Yeah. There's a base pro, ba- Bass Pro oh, Pyramid. Oh, so God. Can you play on that? Is that like a... Oh, yeah, like wow. he would get inside one of the raptors and like oh, sit cool. in it for a little bit. You know, he loved um, sports, obviously, and he loved Dick's sporting goods. And when he was like well, just over two You paused way years, at the wrong place there. You were like, he loved Dick's. And I know. Like, well, because he... We have these videos of him when he's like two, two and a half years old and we would just drive to the mall because like, what else are we going to do? Yeah. And, you know... Potomac or whatever, and he would just run down and go, Dicks! <laughs> Dicks! I'll send you a video of that. We have so many of them. Before we do these Pajitsky effects, I'm going to ask you a series of questions okay. to determine whether or not my kids are normal. Okay. Because I think every mom secretly worries, like, oh my God, yep. is everyone's kid fucking? Okay. I feel like my boys fuck me up physically on a daily basis like even if it's like they hug me but it'll be like ow like you just pulled my yes. hair yes and yes. they like mom i love you and they jump on you yes. and they like lick my face they blow in my eyes yes so yours do that yes. too does that ever slow down or yes bo doesn't do it anymore just jack okay bo doesn't do it anymore just jack. yeah yeah so my little one too yeah the yeah. other the other one's mellowed out okay number two um my boys play a game called uh, breaking toys. They just throw toys on the ground and smash them to no. pieces. Okay. Not but normal. I but I feel like other people might. My boys are psychos, maybe is what it is. Okay. Okay. Check on that one. <laughs> Toy breaking abnormal. Okay. Um my boys will uh, a lot of naked time. They love to be nude. No, my kids do not. Well, so far. They like to be in their <laughs> underwear, though. <laughs> they're not they're like nude. Being, no. Wow. They both really la- actually like to be fully clothed all the time. Wow. Yeah. And I wonder. Did, but I've heard that boys like to be naked. It's always naked. Um, do your boys play with their peeners a lot? Yeah. Oh, my little ones always. Yeah. Like to point yeah. where we're, we've just stopped asking, do you have to go potty? Because we've realized it has nothing to do with that. Um, okay, and then, good. but I feel like I have to stop them from like grabbing each other's. Yes. Yes. Like I'm like, no, 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 yeah. no. <laughs> yes. We don't do that. Bop, bop, bop. You can yeah. touch your own penis. That's right. And then I do like to tell them who's allowed to touch their yes. penis. Like, yes. Mommy, daddy. Doctor. Doctor. If we're there. If we're there. Yeah. Right? All this between all, no one else. God, all these things we have to do now. I know. It's so scary. Um, okay. Let me see what else. Uh, oh, uh, mine curse uh every once in a while okay oh mine's a bo's like very aware but bo is at the age where he's like we we curse in front of our kids all the time but bo's aware that he shouldn't say it yeah Ellis but is like that he'll too. like but he can read and write so he will spell it out sometimes or be like oh mommy i saw that word over there but he's like he's chill about it okay Jack's still young and cute enough that when he says it, it's the best. It's hilarious, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, Tom talked about this on Two Bears, but I told Julian, the younger one, that the worst word in the English language is darn it. Darn it. And, and every time he says darn it, I go, oh, don't say darn it. So don't you say, say darn it. No. So then he'll go fucking darn it. Oh. And then <laughs> totally, totally negates. He'll be like, wow. fucking, fucking. And I won't react. And then he'll go, darn it. And I'll go, oh, don't you say darn it. Don't you say darn it. Fucking. Anyway. Uh, um, okay. okay. My children are obsessed with the movie Turning Red. They saw it. They didn't vibe with it. Wow. Kids are fucking space aliens. Yeah, it's about they the women's- want, They love bad guys. The movie Bad Guys. Oh, yeah, I like out. that they one. Love That's it. a good one. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. I'm trying to think of something else. Well, at least they hurt you. That That helps. Oh, my God. Yes. Because I'm like, this Do is Do I still violence. have a bruise right here? Is it, or has it gone away? No, it's gone. Oh. But was that from a kid? I was rocking a bruise for a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. From Jack. Just grabbing. 
me. He uses like, he uses me as leverage to like get up places or like when we're swimming, especially like he'll swim to me. Like he knows how to swim, but like he still like wants to grab you and like he'll grab my nipple and like take it with him. And I'm like, no. Oh, that's another one. Do they touch your boobs? No, no. They're past that. I think mine are. Psychos. Well, you've got great boobs, big, big ones. Yeah, I don't know if they're great, but if they're mine were, big. if mine were like yours, I'm, I feel like they would be more interested. <laughs> yeah, Ellis will sl- like pat them. He'll be like, bang, bang, bang. I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, especially for when I'm a bathing suit and yes. we're in the pool oh, together, yeah. and he's like, bow, bow, bow. I'm like, dude, <laughs> and he knows he's doing something naughty. Of course, he'll laugh. Yeah, of course. Okay, well, that was fun. You know what? I'm going to start asking other moms if their kids do these behaviors too. Take a good poll. Take yeah. a poll and see. Yeah. I thought the naked thing for sure. Wow. No, I, I do think I a lot of little boys like to be naked. Yeah, they're always naked. Yeah, no, my kids are just like... Oh, do your kids eat like shit? Yeah, my the little one. But I'm kind of a hard ass about it in, in a way where they have their pantry full of like all the fun shit, but you they have to eat certain things before only because I was n- never introduced to anything healthy oh, growing geez, up. Yeah. So I had to really work hard in like my late twenties, early thirties to like learn to like healthy food. And it was like a really big struggle for me. So I'm trying to just get them to like yes. be used to healthier food. That's smart. Very smart. I was told that uh, they're not going to likely eat the broccoli that's on their plate, but as long as the broccoli is there. You just keep putting it there in front of them. Yeah. Bo, oddly, is a pretty good eater. Jack is more like he would much rather just be straight up pasta and mac and cheese like, yeah. every meal, but we get it in when we can. Yeah, you sneak it on the days you can. Yeah, they I'm like trying. smoothies. That's what I was just talking about with uh, Katie Morton, smoothies. You can you can put spinach you can throw in there. Spinach, avocado, they don't. They don't know. They don't throw know. enough juice in there. Covers it all. Suck it. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about iPad time? We had to. We've limited to just the weekend now. Oh, smart. And only a couple of hours a day uh, because mainly Bo was becoming a really big dick. Yeah. Especially playing this game Roblox. OK. Um, It just like to the point where on a Saturday I would look at him and be like, did you just play Roblox? Wow. Yeah. Like it changes him. And I don't know, we've we also limited it because we want to use it when we need it. Right. So when we know we need an hour, we'll just be like, hey, you can have your iPad now for a little while. And so limiting it to the weekend makes us feel less guilty, but then also like lets us just have our time when we need a break. I might do that because Ellis, um, I'm letting him use his iPad more when Julian was sick. They're both really, sure. really sick. Well, so like they're sick. Yeah. So now he's in the habit of being on the iPad. So his personality too got scary. And yeah. I was like, all right, dude, we're done. Like, I, I don't know if I should go cold turkey or just limit. Maybe the weekends is a good thing. The weekends is good and they look yeah. forward to it. You can yeah. still hold it as ransom. Yeah. You know oh, what I mean? Like, you yeah. can still be like, oh, you're going to lose it, dude. And then you're going to go like two weeks without one. Yeah. Um, but Bo is getting older. Now he's like more into Xbox, mm-hmm. which I don't mind because- he'll like create a character or like a team for an hour. So I feel like he's being creative. Like he's doing the shoelace color and his guys always look really stocky with thick (laughs) necks. But like he uh, like he spends time doing that. I don't mind that. So that's good. Okay. Okay. Very good. But we used I mean, in COVID, forget about it. We were in a point where it was like fucking whatever. Eight hours. See ya. COVID was the lost year. Oh. In terms of, especially when we were all in California and- my, when my kid was two and Julian was two, he didn't even go to a playground because they were I all know. locked up. I know. Never got a cold that entire year. Never. It was so sad. So now he's getting everything. Every, you know? I know. But we it just, just it just stunted them for a year. It's terrible. 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 Yeah. Anyway, let's do another Pajitsky effect. These are so much fun. I love hearing that other people are as dumb as I am sometimes. Pajitsky effect. Hey, mommies, this is Bryce down in Iowa, and I've got a Pajitsky effect for you. So a few months ago, I got a new truck, and it's whatever. Uh, the one thing that I don't like about it's it, though, whatever. is that the steering wheel is really hard to reach, like in the dash. Oh. I have my seat moved up as close as can be without it being too uncomfortable, but I still have to Superman that shit, and I've been driving like that for quite some time now. <laughs> Today, I learned that if I pull that little lever at the bottom of the oh. steering wheel, not only can I adjust the height, yeah. but I can also pull it closer to me. <laughs> 
So for absolutely zero reason, I have been driving like a Victoria's Secret model for six months now. <laughs> I get a kick out of it. Uh, congrats on the Netflix special. It was Liddy like a titty. They saw me beat me Thank and touched you. my steering wheel through the fence. Oh, my God. How long before you figured out you could adjust the steering wheel? Like I that? don't know, but I love it. Yeah. Because everyone's like, I, I like have like different, fe- you know, some days I'm like, I want it like right here. And other days I'm like, I kind of want to like, yeah, I don't want to like one arm drive it and feel like a gangster, you know, yep. like I love, I love moving my steering wheel around. Me too. I, and now that I've discovered it, I think, I think maybe five years ago I discovered it. Well, cause it used to have, I mean, some of them have like where you pull it out and you kind of have to like, ugh, like get it in. But <laughs> you know, some, uh, mine has like an electric one now. It's really yes. nice. Yeah, like I can just ever slightly mm. put it up to mm. left, right. Yeah, yeah. But, but this is amazing to be like lock armed. <laughs> it's like an ab workout. Bad, bad. Fucking brutal, dude. <sighs> All right, next one. I love these. Hey, mommy Tina. I am a dog daddy. Um, I had a weird Pajiski effect. I bought some bowls at Walmart that are like fifty cents each because I only had a couple bowls. Did that a bunch of months ago. Just realized now that I can buy new silverware because I have a group of silverware that I go through and I have a couple tiny, tiny forks and I always rummage around in it and avoid the tiny forks. I just realized today I can throw the tiny forks out. So I grabbed them, threw them in the trash. I'm going to go buy bigger forks. Anyway, piss on me, beat me. I'm coming up in May. I just realized that you could do that too. (laughs) You're like, thank you. For giving me permission to throw away my tiny forks. Tiny, I didn't know they come with tiny forks. Tiny forks. Tiny forks. I think the, yeah, tiny forks. It's keeping things you hate, which I am an absolute, because now since I've started having these Pajitsky effects more and more, I start to become, I am a stickler now for throwing everything out that we oh. are. Throw it away. Throw it yep. out. Yep. Like I just came across a fucking basket of chargers. Like, you know how you get a kid's toy and now it doesn't come with like a normal thing. It comes with a USB thing. And you're like, dude, I don't even know what toy this yeah. fucking belongs to. Clearly no one's used it in ages. Why are they all collected in a fucking bin? Throw I, it away. My cutter doesn't like to throw anything away. And I'm like, Ugh. if we have not used it in the last six months to a year, gone. Gone. Nope. Because you don't need it. And nope. you just go rebuy it. Yep. And that's an Amazon. It's literally I push my button on the phone and it shows up yep. the next day. Yep. But keeping things you hate, how long does it take you? <laughs> like clothing? Oh, I love to throw away. Oh, or tell I love me. To give away. Cutter, actually, I'm like, done. we're about to redo all our bathrooms and our closet. So I told Cutter, I'm like, you got to go through your closet. I'll do it with you. So we have it written on our calendar tomorrow. He's going to pop an Adderall in the morning. Oh. And we're going to get in the closet <laughs> and we're going to go. And I, I'm i the queen of like donate, mm-hmm. who to send this to, goodwill, like consignment, whatever. I am, the older I get, the less I want. Yeah. I want like just c- a couple of things. I don't want to be overwhelmed in the closet. You know, I just want like the things that I like, the colors that I like, the fit that I like, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And not like into the trendy anything anymore. Yeah, I've started to realize that that's how I live is I really only wear yeah. uh, a few things at a time. So why do I have all this crap that I've had for years that I'm never going to wear? But then I'll keep like the leather skirt that I wore for yes. YMH Live, yes. the cowgirl thing that I will never fucking wear in a million years. But it has like energy to it. Yeah. That you just like you feel when you look at it or yeah. see it. Yes. I, I 100% have like a couple of things that are special to me, but I've gotten really, I think the move here got me really good at getting rid of stuff because packing up an entire house and moving to another state. Yeah. You really see how much shit you accumulate. Like oh, I cannot yeah. believe how much shit we had. Oh yeah. How much shit you have and then how much shit you store. And I, I cannot pay for a storage facility. Oh, uh, we got rid of ours and it feels uh, so good. Well, guess what? Mr. Segura likes to keep all his memorabilia, like from being a comedian, like this, you know, badge for getting into this festival. Right. And I'm like, we, I'm not keeping this. But like, yeah, what are you going to, what, what is he going to do doing? with it? I know, but he thinks that it's if For his museum one day. Yeah. 
you have beautiful walls here. <gasps> Go to the storage room and throw that's everything great, up on all the walls. That's a great idea. I might actually do that. Frame things. Because he really likes to see his accomplishments yeah. and like feel proud. I get that. I get, I that, get too. that. Yeah. Whereas I'm the opposite. Like I have my specials posters that they give you. And they're in my closet, like just really. Because well, oh, I'm like, we I gotta frame a couple of those. Yeah, they're then. they're framed, they're framed, okay. but they're they're in my closet because I'm I don't want to be reminded of work when I'm at like at home. But here you could. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I like. And there's this probably idea. like a fun little like cool way you could do something with all his badges. <gasps> now I'm getting like nerdy. That's a great you know idea. I mean? Like do little frames of all of them or all of them like in a in a thing. collage like a. That's a really good idea. I think I'm gonna do that, but I don't. I don't know. I feel let me touch them. We'll see. It's my oh, <sighs> it's a good project for him. <laughs> no, yeah, but I hate key. I've kept so many things. There's a few spoons in my drawer. There's the one wonky spoon that's stolen from a restaurant. You got to keep it. I got to keep that one because I do. Yeah, it's a memory. God, now I'm thinking of all the shit that I don't like in my house. Yeah, the kitchen can accumulate a lot of shit too. Yeah, like I have a million. Um, coffee on the go mugs mm. that don't have lids. Oh, and we've kept them all. Why? And Tom won't let me throw them out. Why? Uh, Does he use them? He gets mad at me because he'll be like, "Where's the the Yeti the thing?" And I'm like, "I don't know." Did you just throw it away? And I'm like, "No." <laughs> yeah. Well, you need to make a bin like Lost and Found. Oh. If things don't have tops or bottoms, throw them in there. But then, if That's two smart. weeks they haven't been found. Throw them out. Gone. Gone. What's your, do you have a mom hack that you want to share that you, like, let's say you have to get something done. So my mom hack is when I grocery shop, I'll give myself, I'll put something on TV or like a podcast in and I'll give myself an hour and I'll wash all the fruit or whatever and I cut it up and I Ooh. put it away in the fridge so it's like very easy to get to because when I'm having to make lunches or make food like I don't want all the extra steps I just want to grab and throw shit on a plate yep so that's my I'm, I'm that's sure it's huge. not very original but it helps me a lot in my life no I mean it makes a big difference like if you buy a watermelon like cut it all up yep. and then put it away so that way the kids can even help and then themselves. you actually like eat it instead of like yeah. throwing it away after it gets bad on your yeah. counter I'm That's like, I hate one. when that happens, which happens every week, but you know. Oh yeah, or or the water bottles that uh, we take two sips of and then they're yep. just around the house. That yeah, no. So fucking crazy. We've got, we, we've become since moving to Austin, a Yeti family. Really? So everybody has like, the kids have like their personalized little Yeti water bottles. So we'll just fill it up. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. I might, and it has a straw, right? Let me see. Did that Rob one. tell you that he drank all my water? Wait, what? You you have never met a human that drinks more water <laughs> than Robert Eiler. <laughs> Wait. So we get six huge like glass wa Mountain Valley for our water cooler per week. <clears throat> On day three, he drank all our water. What? All our water. Rob. No, like I'm talking, yeah, the all that. Yeah, the five gallon. Jesus. Gone. He drank that? Gone. Well, I mean, we had little cups here and there in between. Like, he would just keep refilling Jesus. his thing. Yeah. I've never met. I was like, are you drowning? Are you okay? What's happening? I feel like I don't see this side of Rob. Oh, he drinks like, I think he told me he drank. Well, that's what keeps him until he eats is just keep drinking water. Oh, because he has one meal a day, right? Mm -hmm. The middle meal, mm -hmm. the lunchtime, the chicken over the sink. Or, or like 5 p.m. It, should, it yeah. was like falling on a lot. Wow. Yeah. That is wild, yeah. dude. I'm such a maniac. I drank all my water. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do another um, Pajitsky effect. I do enjoy these. Hi, mommies, booth boys. This is Adriana from New Jersey. Um, I had a Pajitsky effect that I thought I would share. Um, going to a kid event where there's going to be food, and my husband said, oh, I, I bet you hope that there's some Elios because I grew up on Elios Pizza. I loved it. And I said, sure, I would be happy with it as long as they don't have that French pizza. And he said, oh, you mean French bread pizza? And I looked at him and then it dawned on me. Oh, that's pizza made on French bread. This whole time for oh 43 God. fucking years, I thought <laughs> it was French pizza, pizza from France. And I hated it. 
Well, now I realize that I'm a fucking idiot, uh, stupid broad. God. And that is just plain the pizza on French bread. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thought I would share. Thanks, guys. They finally beat me. You knew it was French bread. No. <laughs> I didn't, like, I didn't connect it. But I'll tell you, <laughs> did you think it was Parisian? <laughs> no. Because, you know, when you would get it, like, in the frozen food yeah, section? Yeah, yeah. That's how I've always eaten French was bread pizza. Was it Stouffer's yeah. made them? Yeah. So, like, I never made the connection. But it says French bread. But I never made the connection that it was like... That's French bread, like a French bread loaf. Yeah, mm. cut in half and right. then made into it. I never got that. Well, you know what? We, so did you... Is that the pizza you had in your freezer? Yeah, this exact we had, one. See, we had Celeste Mama pizzas. Celeste. I love Mama Celeste. Don't even talk to me fucking about... Loves Wait, Mama which Celeste. one do you... Do you remember those fucking weird meatballs that were on yeah, it? Yeah, no, the we Supreme? just had the plain cheese and it was huge when they came out with the personal size yeah. ones. I mean, you would throw them in the <laughs> microwave and just like watch and like wait for it to bubble over the little like... <gasps> silver disc that they gave yeah. on the cardboard box that you put in it's so gross the crisper that's to make it crispy yes didn't do it never we now our house fucks up an amy's pizza we oh yeah eat, we, like, fuck up we too. eat like six or seven a week yeah easily julian's obsessed but i now that i think about it i think mama celeste is better than amy's i haven't had a celeste pizza in so long you, okay so go home will you will you do it with me yes you buy a celeste and an amy's and let's do it because i would love it i think the amy's my kiddo eats it it's too sweet oh i like it though. like it's so I like sweet amy's, though you know what else? We, what is that? What is the? Yeah, we fuck up Amy's too. Well, I remember so when funny. we we tried to get like <laughs> fancy at the Sigler house, and we got like. Do you remember when Bobali came out, where you would get like <laughs> yes! just the bread, and you would buy like the sauce and make it yourself? You yes! felt all fancy. It was terrible. Bo-bo-ly. But like, I think we convinced ourselves for a really long time that we liked it because we felt like we were doing something cool. Google Bobali. Bobali pizza. B-O-B-O-B-O-L-I. Yeah. Bobali. I remember that. Yeah. There it is. What a fucking racket that was. Yeah, it sucks. It was just crust. Yeah. And you had to put your own shit. And it wasn't even good. It wasn't good. At all. Okay. Do you remember the hot dogs with the chili in the middle? No. Frankenstuffs? That's fucking disgusting. My mom would not let us buy that. Dude, I can't believe I just realized that Stouffer's French bread pizza is a piece of French bread cut in half yeah. and then it's a, just a pizza. a pizza. But what a brilliant idea because I do love those more than well, life Well, you itself. can eat them like a sandwich. You're, they're much easier to eat. Wait a minute. You can put, bro, the... Double it? Wow. Wow. That would be good. What? You just that blew my really mind. Good. That'd be so good. That'd be so good. Like, why aren't I buying those? A pizza anymore? sandwich. Why hasn't anyone done that? Might be your billion dollar idea your, right there. It's your billion dollar. Sorry, right, just do the work and give a me some pizza percentage sandwich. That's a great idea. Oh. Is it at a calzone though? Maybe that's a, is yeah. that too similar to calzone? But they have to eat with a fork. Uh, you know, don't you? Do you eat calzones with your hand? I think you can. Oh, it's hot. Just, yeah, it's, it's pretty so hot. hot. Messy. I, I like pizza bites though. Those are good. Yeah, those too. are good. But those, those are still adjust. hard to find like at the right temperature. They're either going to burn your mouth or like they're kind of <laughs> cheese got hard. You know what I mean? Wow, boys to men. French A lot of growth. Bread. A lot of growth in this past <laughs> podcast. Do you hate drying yourself off when you get out of the shower? Ugh, I hate showering in yeah. general. I'm always and so happy I did it. But it feels like such a goddamn chore to me. I fucking hate it. So does Nadav. And I was just thinking of Nadav this morning because I was like, I love showering. I love how long I'm going to sit here because my kid's asleep. And he's so he gets in and he gets out. You just, how long is your shower? Like five minutes max? It depends if I'm washing my hair, shaving, all those things. But if it's just like a rinse off and stuff, under five. I'm oh. in, I'm out. I'm doing what I need and I'm done. But you dry yourself off. Yeah. You're yeah, good, you're I think it's more because like I have to put like I put lotion on. Oh, like, wow. I'll, like I do think I have steps when I shower and it's just annoying. It is annoying. I would not. that That's varsity level lady stuff. Putting it's, on lotion. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and, that, and it's so funny. My friend Sarah Tiana, she's a comedian. I've known her forever. And she's she, we're talking about this one day and she's like, you don't put lotion on. She's like, God, you're such an animal. Like you're such a dude. <laughs> 
She's like, you need to put lotion on. Everybody the winter months, I don't put as much, which is probably when you need yeah, it more, but you're not like seeing my legs or arms as much. So like, yeah. it, I won't. But in the summer, I'll, yeah, because I'll forget. But that's then, why you look so glowy and healthy is- is Because of the lotion? Because like my arms are like dry pterodactyls. And that's why. You yeah. look all rinky, <laughs> wrinkly and God, forget about my legs. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. I, I got God. in such a habit of not shaving my legs in COVID yeah. that I'll sometimes go out with shorts and be like, oh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't look. Whoops. And then I'm wondering, I'm like, do people think I'm so cool that I don't care or that I'm disgusting? Probably oh, and, both. In Austin, it means I'm disgusting. No, you're cool. Oh, really? You well, no, to... and you're Austin. Not out all the way where I live, probably. Because <laughs> You're went... still in like the fun, weird Austin. I'm oh. in like the real suburban Texas half-life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, Austin. yeah, yeah. I still have to come. I want to, I'm sorry. You gotta I'm, come. sorry I'm like inviting myself over I, to your but house. But you know you're always welcome. I, I definitely, uh, so, so I was at our equivalent of Whole Foods. Uh, what's the fucking name of the place, you guys? Central Market. Central Market. And there was a girl wearing short shorts, cowboy boots, a cowboy hat, and then fully hairy legs. Like hairy like my husband Tom's legs. Oh. And, that's um, like takes effort to get that. Yeah, I feel like you're kind of, you're trying to rub it in my face. Yes. Like, look at me. That's not a missed a shave. That's like a. Yeah. And it's a deliberate choice to showcase mm -hmm. the legs. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I resent it. Does it, it make you uncomfortable? Like, it makes me uncomfortable because I feel like she's deliberately trying to upset me, even though that's definitely not what's happening. She's not trying to upset me. She's just doing her own. Maybe she's trying to upset her mommy or her dad. Maybe daddy. she's trying to upset somebody. I think she's so making too. a statement. Yeah, she's it, it's it's deliberate. Yeah, it's like when I was goth and as a teenager, and I would pretend that I was doing it for me. The, the truth is, I was trying to get attention from my parents or other people. I'm trying to be. I'm angry at the world. Do you think that's like a general like what? Pe people that dress goth are doing yeah. i think so it's a, it, listen why don't i want to look like everybody else i'm trying to make a statement I'm trying to be special I'm yeah different. yeah i want to see pictures oh pff, look at my instagram feed really yeah there's a couple oh, i gotta go back the, into it the problem is it was the 90s yeah will you go to my instagram feed uh it was the 90s so we weren't taking as many photographs right. and i was a teenager um anyway there's any crap it's what's he up to go down i did it for world goth day there I am. <laughs> oh, I saw that one. But you're like pretty goth there. Oh. You're not, you're, I can see your face. Yeah. I guess my head was thinking you had like thick, thick, oh. thick black eye. Look how yeah. pretty you are though. Thanks, man. You were a hot goth. Kind of was, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you're not you lying. Me, uh, this is the truth. 19, that was, a, that was a good year too. How old were you when you met Tom? Um, God, 26. Six? Really? He was 23. <gasps> wow. Can you believe that? That's how long he and I have like yeah. been jamming out together. That's it's awesome. Wild. How about you and Cutter? Cutter was 22 when they met him, but I was 30. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And you guys have lasted. You guys have made sure. We're in it. We've made it. We're, yeah, we're 10 plus years. It's awesome. crazy. What do you see happening in the future? No more kids. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's like, I think after a while, like you're with somebody for so long that you're like, I wouldn't want it any other way, but we've just, we've just been through so much shit together. Like he's my guy. Like he's like, I can't truly imagine doing it life with anybody else. Oh my God. Here's you can imagine. fantasize about like, if it would be easier, this thing or that thing, but like, no, like he's like, we've got each other down. Yeah. We know how to, show up for each other when we need. We know what ticks each other off. We know what makes each other feel better. Yep. And that kind of stuff, like, you need. That's how you get through life. I, I agree. Because it's really not about, like, I don't know if there is an ideal partner. I think there's a partner that's willing to work with your craziness and you're willing to work with their yep. craziness. Like, yep. The willingness to show up and, and, and like, do the work of a marriage. Yeah. I also think a, a big part of it is I like who I am in his eyes. Oh, that's nice. Like I like the way he sees me. So when I can get lost in shit, like he can, I he makes me feel better the way Aww. he feels about me. 
and I, I think he can say that about me. I hope so. But, (laughs) but I, um, I, I do think that that's like a, like something that's would never be worth losing. Of course. You know? Yeah. I think I'm I'm right or die with Segura too. That's great. I can't imagine, um, being married to somebody else. That'd be wild, right? Like to do it all yeah. over again. I'd oh my die. God. Hearing about people dating now? No, nah, I, I want to die. Um, who? But that being said, who's your celebrity TV show mm. crush? Like who do you lick your chops to when you're watching Euphoria? That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> God, that show. I know. Like what do you, what do you, because I'm such a middle-aged mom now that I watch TV shows and I'm like, he's so handsome. Well, I love Euphoria because they're all so pretty. They're so pretty. They're all so gorgeous and young. Look, look at Nate, the guy that plays Nate, Jacob. He Alort. doesn't do it for me though. <gasps> not, yeah, I'm not a Nate guy. Uh, mm, wow. I see. I would be more um, Fesco. I like Fesco too. Yeah, that would be who I would have go, gone after if I was like young and hungry. Yeah, young. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love. See, I don't want to. I don't want to have sex with him, but I love Steve Carell. Oh, like, yeah, I, sure. I would be so down with him being my life partner. Sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> or I like move that. in with him and his wife. Like, I just like, I don't know. I there's agree. something about him when I watch him. And also maybe it's like the actor in me where I'm like, he looks like he's always having fun, but he's always so good in everything he does. I bet he's so fun to work with. I also feel that w- way whenever I watch anything that like Judd Apatow makes, because yeah. I'm like, everyone that's always in his movies is great. And I think that's because whoever's the director makes people feel great. Well, you know that, yeah, I mean? that and they pick kindred spirits. Yes. Like, like there's a people that are enjoying their time doing what they're doing. And that's like the dream. Oh, yeah. You know, I think you like Steve Carell. Why? I feel like he's the male version of you a little bit. Like I really? feel like he's. Yeah. Like if you were a guy, he's that's got such that, a compliment. He's got the same energy, like good vibes only. Have you met him? Do you know him? I don't know him. No, I usually only know. I know I've met Apatow and um, doing stand up because he's not a stand up. I don't get right, to see him right. around. Right, right. I don't know. He's just like, I like he him. also like kind of looks like my dad a little bit. <laughs> there you if go. He see? had a Jew for all, he'd look like my dad. There you go. You know who I feel a connection to? And I want to say if Owen Wilson. I don't oh. know why. I feel like I have, uh, I like his vibe. I At like his vibe. Plays and the Wilson brother, I like Luke. He like doesn't try to play anyone else than who he <laughs> yeah, is. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, you do you, bro. You have perfected ev- this and he's great. <laughs> like I have a crush. I want to bang Luke Wilson. Oh. But I, I'd hang out with Owen. Interesting. Yeah. But Luke. I really I, I love, um, I love Jason Bateman. Love. I know I like, I like smart, funny love. guys. Like I just like, I would love to just be around This is you too. This guy looks like you. Uh, yeah, here's my twin. That's your your male <laughs> part. Oh, yeah. that's so funny. I've heard good things about him too. I have friends who are friends. Really? That's and I've cool. I've heard nothing good. I like his podcast. I mean, nothing but good, I should say. Not. Do you ever listen good. to his podcast? No, no, but With I hear Will it's Arnett great. Will and Sean Hayes. It's great. They're funny. They're, I just, like I said, I like smart, funny, nice guys. So you're looking at whole personality here. I'm looking at bangability. I know. So- Let's. Well, what does this say about me? I don't watch anyone and be like, Ugh. oh, see, I divorce emotion from this game entirely because I don't actually want Miles to. Miles Teller about was that. very sexy in the Who's Top Miles Gun Teller? movie. Go ahead, Maverick. The, he played uh, Goose's son. I didn't. I didn't like him. I didn't have a in thing. the movie, or I, you just didn't want to bang him. I didn't want to bang him. No, he's not my. Type. Oh, I like that. That's a good shot of him. No, he's ha- he's very handsome. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. No, he's very. I think yeah. that just for me. Okay, do you want to see my my bang ability yeah. crush? Um, yeah. Henry Cavill, go ahead. Okay. I mean, is there anyone Too more- Too pretty s- for me. He's so pretty. Too pretty for me. But that's why I like to do this game and I make it unattainable. So then I can't, I don't, it's- <laughs> it stays fantasy. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. Yes, I do know what you mean. Um, I also am attracted to Elon Musk a little bit. Is that weird? <laughs> well, you know, he lives here. I know. Have you run into him anywhere? <laughs> No. Not running in the same crowd. I just love what a really what a, no. We run in similar circles, yes, but I I haven't run into him yet. But I just love what a what a strange ranger he is. He is. He his, is. A, he is his own. Look yeah. at that. Look at that. Look yeah, at he's, that one. He's doing his own the thing. Bo- nope. Down to the left. Second one down to the left. That <laughs> I like that look. 
Look at that one. What's I, he saying? I there? was watching that SpaceX documentary and just watching him like at the launches with his arms folded and he's like, fucking it. Yeah. yeah. Get out of the blue. He just goes, fucking it. <laughs> just such a maniac. I like that. Can you imagine just going through life giving zero fucks the way he does? <laughs> like, <sighs> I just can't imagine not like just going through life like that. I think when you've like got that fuck one. You money. See that one? Yeah, Where yeah, he's yeah. like, but he's got fuck you money. What does he care? That's it. That's what wow. I like. He's what like, I don't give a shit. If I don't fuck what you. A I'm a billionaire. Vibe. He doesn't give a shit. Who's he married to now? He was with uh, Grimes. I, I think they broke up. They right? broke up. They have two oh, kids. He's single. Grimes. <laughs> <laughs> on the imagine? market. Like, Get on Raya. Tom, I love there. you, but it's Elon Musk. But he's got, he's he's like with supermodels. He don't he want my old that's ass. His, that's his, that's who he's. Yeah, he's into like young, I think, cutesy, cutesy tootsies. Mm. Nah, it ain't for me. No, nah, no. Nah. At the end of the day, I love mine. I like Chris me. Pratt. Oh, he's cute. Right? That's a good one. Google Chris Pratt. <laughs> oh, he's so handsome. Like, I loved him in Guardians of the Galaxy. Loved. And, yeah. Now, he was with Anna, Anna Ferris. Ferris. Yes. I've heard good things about Anna. Me too. I've heard she's great. Yeah. I've never met her, but I've heard she's wonderful. Same. There you go. Yeah. yeah what Chris a dog. Pratt. Yeah. yeah. Look at him. He's such a fat slob. Yeah. Terrible looking. Yuck. See, would you bang? This is your bangable? Is this I your, think so. your bangable? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's your bang rip, type. Rip Cole Hauser from Yellowstone. Let me you, see that. Do you watch Yellowstone? Nope. I know. I hear it's great. Or and actually oh, any, he's cute. anyone on Yellowstone. You like masculine? Anyone on Yellowstone. I like masculine. Yeah, I, I am too. Except for Henry Cavill. He was very no. He's masculine as shit, right? Is he Superman? Yeah. Was, I mean, that's pretty masculine. That's true. pretty tough. That's true. Yeah. Anyone on Yellowstone? Oh, I like that. Yeah, they're very rugged. They're All cowboys. Yes. Yeah. There it is. Okay. I, figu- I figured it out. Thank you. Okay, and let's play this game. Who's your perfect Depp? What era of Johnny Depp are you going to bet? Oh, um, blow. But Google Johnny Depp and blow. Let's see that era. Now, how old is he here? Oh, yeah. He's mature, but he's not too mature. Yeah. He's he's young, but he's not too young. Mm-hmm. Gosh, that's a good Depp era. Yeah. Right? <sighs> wow. What's yours? Okay. Um, Scissor hands? You knew it. Wow. <laughs> now, but now looking as an older woman, maybe that's not, he's too young there. See, it's too adolescent for yeah. me now. Now I'm not interested. No. It's not. I, you I like. Can't. No. He looks I, like a baby. He's too young. It's too young. It's too too adolescent. I think I like a pre Pirates Depp. Uh huh. On the like right before Pirates. What was he doing? Pirates one was was good Depp too. I like that. I'm gonna go for uh, Pirates one Depp. Let me see that. Early two thousands. Oh man, what a handsome fella. Yeah, there <sighs> you go. I like that one. Okay. Oh yeah, very. Look at that interview. The hair's a little. Like scruffy. shorter now, scruffy. Oh, I'll tell you what I'm not into. Um, excessive jewelry depth. Like when he starts getting into the bracelets. Well, he and got the thumb it too rings. inspired by uh Yeah. What's his what's the yeah. pirate's name? Jack Jack, Jack Sparrow. Sparrow. Yeah. So so pre Jack Sparrow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not into all that shit on his no, that's too much. Too much bullshit. Too much jewelry. Okay. I get it. Yeah. No, I mean I have to agree with you on blow. Maybe that's the era. Well, you good. really had that on deck too. Like you, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I really, oh, really was wow. right oh. available with that one. Oh wow. Okay, I saw. Oh. I have a Depp. Uh, what's eating Gilbert Grape? Depp. Go ahead. Mm. Could be too young. No, too young. Yeah, he. Oh, look at that face. So good. Oh, that movie. Have you ever met him, Johnny Depp? I've never met Johnny Depp. Mm. Never met him. Am I allowed to ask who your famous, most famous boyfriend was? He wasn't a boyfriend, but I dated him for like a hot second. At the time, he was very famous, Nick Carter. Wow, the party starter, Nick Carter. Is that what he? Is that his rep? No, that's Darren <laughs> Carter, the comedian. Oh. Party starter. Nick Carter was Backstreet in Backstreet Boys. Backstreet. Wow, mm-hmm. that's 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 big. Yeah. Wow, that's a good I one. Just met him in New York and hung out with him for a little while. Um, I think he was my most famous boyfriend. Yeah, well, I guess. But like, was not boyfriend. No, you just like, like were like a two three month flingy. Yeah, you know what I mean. How about Leonardo DiCaprio? You ever heard anything? I've met him. Yeah, so nice, so so normal, handsome. 
<clears throat> yes. Yeah. yeah. But like most of the time, like very like tight, low baseball cap, you know, because sure. I've only uh, met him in like social settings with other people, like not like at a dinner party. Like I wasn't in the intimate crew, but like one of my good girlfriends, boyfriend slash life partner, they've been together for 25 years, um, is like one of his best friends. So like oh. I've been around at birthday parties. Very nice, normal guy. I know. They usually are. The bigger the they're usually. Yeah, oh, like cool. he doesn't has, he has nothing to prove. Yeah. So they're not like out there. They're like sitting back type He's of He's like, people. I'm Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, you fucking stupid come to me. Bitch, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think I'm hot? Fuck you. Everyone else does. Exactly. It's amazing. It's so amazing. Tom Cruise, let's talk about what an amazing star he is. He is a movie star. He yes. is a legend. Watching him in Maverick, I'm like, they don't make him like this anymore. That's what I was they thinking. They don't. You know why? Like, look at that. I mean, like, he, it's like what we were like making fun of him all for, for a little while with like how much he like was like in love and then he was going crazy cuckoo and jumping on the couch and whatever. But like he, he just, he embodies like that old movie star, yes. but also like <clears throat> really honest, genuine and like he's aged well. He also, I think there's something to be said about doing your own stunts. Yes. Like he brings that, when you push yourself to those limits and you can actually do it, like, you know, he's not faking it. Mm -mm. It's so sexy. It's so cool. He, again, it's like he, he was the whole movie. He was amazing. Nobody can touch him. No matter what you say about him, the guy's a fucking legend. A legend. And I was really appreciating him watching Maverick. Cause you're like, you're right. This is a timeless, this is a real star and they don't come around uh, he's he's an absolute star of this gener Completely. generation, two generations, three gen. I mean, the guy is yep. amazing, and he's all in. He's so committed. You can see. Remember the oh shit. I'm not allowed to say. Good catch, Gene. Shit. No there's spoilers. A, there's a scene where he really has to <laughs> muster. He has very little to play against. I will say. Uh huh. <laughs> We were LOLing in the theater, which is inappropriate. But uh, I mean, you and you look at it and you're like, that's an actor, man. Like who can who can play? Well, to I very think he little. was feeling genuine feelings of <laughs> sadness. Do you not feel? I feel like he was looking across from his friend and I was moved. I was moved. I thought it was a very genuine. Moment. I know what you're saying. I, I think I wanted to cry, too, during that scene. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, well, that's I see what you're yeah. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. But yes, I agree. And I and I have I will say I know people that know him very well and I don't know anything about his personal life or whatever, but have Who all cares? said he is the I, fucking nicest. I'm sure. Like when you get down to it and the human being, like he's a really nice guy. I I exactly. And you don't know what the fuck is up. Who knows what people are saying? Um, all right, I'll let you go. I, 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 I could talk to you forever. I know, this Thank is so you. fun. Thank you so much for doing this. My I pleasure. know how busy you are. You're on Big Sky. You're you're doing your podcast. Is there anything you'd like to plug besides pajama pants? You guys should really just be pajama listening. pants. Yeah, so that's good. It. We love it. We're, yeah. We you have so much fun. I love you guys. Thank you so much, Jamie Lynn Sigler, for Thank being you. here. Thank you, mommies. Write to me where my mom's at at gmail.com. Leave me a voicemail two one three three seven five five one eight four. Come see me do stand up live. Check out my special if you haven't. Mom Jeans and also Amy Schumer's parental advisory on Netflix now. Okay, mommy, until next time. Meow. Stay cool. Hi, mommy. Thank you for watching that episode. Did you like what you see? I hope you did. So why don't you subscribe? Just click the subscribe button and, you know, hit the notification bell so you can get notified. And also, why don't you watch another video? What? Watch one of these. You know what I'm saying? Like right here, down there, whatever. There's so much stuff, bro. I make these all the time for you to watch. That's why I'm here. I love you. <laughs>